and welcome to another exciting episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. My name is Gary. Guys, I can't tell you how excited I am to bring to you an incredible guest. So make sure you guys buckle up, grab your popcorn, grab some pen and paper, because you're going to take notes on this one. Guys, y'all give it up for none other than Kevin Owens. Oh, wow. I, uh, can we do that introduction again? I, I want right. to take you with me wherever I go. That's, that's I'll be your fantastic. hype man. If you ever, if you ever speak, right. and just, I'll bring out and uh, hype you up. I'll, I'll get that crowd all ready for you. Yeah, but I definitely hey, want to do that. You don't need any hype because, Kevin, I, I've been a fan of yours for quite some time. You post some incredible things on LinkedIn. You have done some incredible things. And so you just you have you have an audience already, sir. But I want to give you a chance to share a little bit more about who you are and what you do. I appreciate that, Gary. Thank you very much for having me on. I, uh, I've been following you as well. And to, to be a guest on your show was a pretty big accomplishment in my mind. So thanks for that. Um, so a little bit about me. I, I'll say first and foremost, I'm a dad and a husband. I'm a family guy. Um, my, my family is really important to me and what I do, I do for them. Uh, so that is first and foremost. So I don't post a lot about that on LinkedIn, et cetera. Uh, not that I can't or won't, but it's just not something I do. So I want people to know that's really important to me. Um, I've been, <laughs> let's see. 20 plus years, I'll say, um, I won't get the exact numbers cause you know, <laughs> that might give age away. But I've been doing what I've done in multifamily for more than 20 years. Uh, the last 15 or so in executive leadership positions, I have had the great privilege to work with so many talented people in our industry and to get to know even more uh, in our industry. I've worked for some great organizations uh, across the country. I have managed property in 36 of our 50 states across the country. And it's been an exciting, exciting career for me. Um, you know, we manage bricks and sticks, but we're a people business. And I think that's part of what excites me about it as well. So 20 plus years doing what I do. Um, I recently have made an adjustment in my career and I am kind of in what I would say a state of semi flux right now, I'm trying to decide what I wanna do uh, with the rest of my career. In the meantime, I'm doing some independent work, some consulting, some coaching, and I'm excited about that. It's been a lot of fun doing it. Uh, not something I've done a lot of, but very, very much enjoy doing what I'm doing right now. And we'll see what the future holds. That's fantastic. And Kevin, I have to compliment you because uh, a lot of us get our life out of order. And I be I truly believe you have your order correctly where you 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 gave recognition to your family first and you recognize that as number one. And then career. So kudos to you for having that, that. as that. a proper order. Yeah, my so, career wouldn't be anything without them. So, yeah, that's just exactly. Exactly. So, Kevin, I always love to connect with inspiring leaders. I love to peek behind the curtain and figure out what inspires these incredible leaders, these inspiring leaders. And so I reached out to you, asked you, hey, Kevin, what inspires you? You brought back three great points. I don't want to get to these. So the first one, we loaded to it early family. So mm -hmm. what is it? Why do you put family first? And what is it that family does that inspires you? It's a great question. First, I, I love the general premise of the conversation, what inspires you. And I, I'm a believer that you can take inspiration from almost anything. And so pairing it down to three sometimes are really tough, <laughs> but family will always be first and foremost inspiration for me. And, and it goes back to what I mentioned earlier. To me, it's the foundation of who I am and what I'm about, uh, the reason I do what I do, the reason I have been as successful as I've been is my family. Um, but beyond that, they truly do inspire me. Um, I'll start with my wife of 31 plus years, uh, who's been been with me along the ride, some bumps in the road, some valleys and mountains, as, as we all have, have experienced, I'm sure. Um, but she's been right there with me, sometimes right by my side, sometimes behind me, pushing me along sometimes in front, pulling me along, but her support and what she's done, not just for me, but with our four children has been amazing. And, and just to watch her interact with other people is an inspiration to me. I take, I take a lot of what I do with people from her. She is a, an ultimate extrovert, the ultimate extrovert, <laughs> never meets a stranger, uh, talks to everybody. Everybody's drawn to her like a magnet. And frankly, I'm not. I am, I'm what I would call an extroverted introvert. So in other words, I'm naturally an introvert and I do what I have to do 
to to enter the situation that I'm in at the time. And so, but I still get a lot of comfort and a lot of strength and a lot of revitalization from being alone, from being by myself. And I think that's okay, but watching her interact with people really helps me be better at it. Wow. And then I mentioned four kids. I've got four kids who have just throughout their lives, they, they've been great kids. Again, not perfect um, by any means, but they've been great kids overall. Two of them, my two older daughters are married and out of the house, off the payroll, as I say sometimes, <laughs> which is a good thing. They married great guys, great husbands. They are doing so well. My oldest is a teacher. My middle daughter actually is in my business. So she's a community manager right now uh, for RPM Living, uh, doing really, really well. And then my third daughter is in her freshman year of college. And then I have a son who's a junior in high school. And their personalities and just watching how they interact with each other and how they've gone from kind of sibling rivals and having the headbutting stuff growing up <laughs> to now being really tight, good friends and kind of taking those relationships beyond and how they've, my older two especially, have interacted with and developed their marriage relationships. And it, it's just something that I look at and I, I talk to my wife about it all the time. It's, it's an amazing thing to see what has happened and certainly, you know, parents have a, a role to play in that. But at the end of the day, we're all individuals and we're human beings and we make our own decisions about how we're going to go and what we're going to take from our our growing up time and what we've learned from other people and, and put that into action. And I'm inspired by what they do every single day. That's fantastic. You know, Kevin, there's a couple of things that really resonated with me is one, your wife and the recognition and awareness that you have that she is your alignment in this world and this life and, and everything that you do. And I love that you've, you recognize her gifts and what she does for you. And you, you're just, you're very appreciative of that. And from that comes your inspiration. And, and that's fantastic. Your, your kids. I, I, I appreciate that as a father myself uh, of mm -hmm. four kids as well. Wow. It's, it's fantastic to watch them grow and watch them develop and, and everything. And to your point, they're individuals. However, they follow the examples that are presented to them. And, and it sounds like you and your wife have presented an incredible foundation, incredible example, so that they're growing up in, in the ways that they were taught. So kudos yeah, to you. That's fantastic. It's amazing. And, you know, I always, sometimes, not always, I sometimes hesitate to talk in such glowing terms, because again, people think that that means things have been perfect the whole time. <laughs> they have not. I, I could, <laughs> I could spend a couple of hours talking about individual situations with each child that have been challenging. We've had to really deal with and talk to and, and talk through and figure out. But what I do believe strongly is that when you build a strong foundation, things can happen. And you're growing up, teenage years come, early adulthood comes, whatever the case may be. And, and sometimes the, you veer off the path, but a strong foundation, a really firm foundation will draw you back. I there really believe that. Um, and, and we've, we've experienced that. We've seen it be successful. So I'm, I'm really happy. And like I said, very inspired by it. That's fantastic. And then that kind of leads me into something else kind of brought to my mind. You had posted something the other day about knowledge and wisdom. And I, I truly believe knowledge. I agree with you. Knowledge is the under or like going through something and wisdom mm -hmm. is knowing not to do that again, or understanding how to kind of get through those things. And that draws you back to the foundation. That's hundred percent right, Gary. I, you know, we, we learn things all the time. And mm -hmm. as I mentioned in, in my post growing up, we call it street smarts. Yeah. Is you, you can be as smart as you can, but if you can't apply that in the situation or you can't draw upon that later on and remember kind of what happened before, then it's really ineffective for you. So the wisdom comes in taking that knowledge and applying it to the situation and, or, remembering I didn't apply it right or well last time. What did I learn from that? And what can I do differently this time to make it better? So couldn't agree more. And I, I oh, think I that, uh, again, draws back to that foundation. That's so good. And that kind of, and Kevin, that leads us to the, the second point that you had is you, what inspires you is the success of others, especially on your team. And I would consider family a team, but there's, you know, also sure. other teams. So what is it about the success of others that, that inspires you? You know, I'll be honest, from a purely selfish perspective, it, it tells me that I'm doing something right. You know, I 
I'm a believer that if you if you say that you're a leader, if you espouse leadership, but nobody's following you, then are you really a leader? So if if you're not producing other leaders, I'm not sure you can call yourself a leader. Now, everybody's new at it at some point, so it's not going to happen immediately, and that's okay. But ultimately, the goal for me is to produce other leaders and to have other leaders be more successful in their careers. I think that that speaks to my impact on them, certainly not because of me all the time or most of the time, but I like to think I have an impact. But beyond that, I just enjoy seeing people do well. Um, and if they're on my team, it's that much more. So for example, if you know every company I've worked for, there's end of the year awards or at some point during the year, there's some kind of award ceremony from the porter or grounds person to a leasing professional to a manager, a regional, anybody that has been on my team that won those kinds of awards, I think my chest swelled as much <laughs> as theirs every time. It just, I love to see that kind of stuff. And when, when I see one of my team members be promoted, sometimes inter hopefully internally, but if not, if they get an opportunity outside the organization, I love that. Because again, they're bettering themselves and I'll never take their credit for it, but it feels really good when they pick up the phone or they send me a text or a LinkedIn message three or four years later to say, I just want to say thank you because what happened at this point in time, this situation really impacted me and helped me get to where I am. So that kind of thing is truly inspirational and why I do what I do. I I am a team first person and a lot of people talk about it, but a lot of people that talk about it really team is more about me, myself and I, the three headed team. That's not the <laughs> team I'm talking about. I'm talking about the collective team, the organization the people that I have an impact or influence on in my career. I want them to succeed to whatever level they want to achieve. Wow. And there's, there's two things again, Kevin, that, that really kind of, I was thinking and processing as you were speaking. One is, yes, it may be selfish what you're kind of like talking about initially, but I believe you're like selfishly benevolent because I, like that I think that's I think that's a great term for for kind of how you're doing it. And I, and I agree with you because this what what you're doing is is an investment because you invest. You're I imagine you're investing in your team, good, bad, ugly, the hard lessons, and and the support and encouragement along the way, and that investment creates something called compound interest along the way. So right. your investment right. kind of doubles itself and by creating new leaders. So I, I I truly I see where you're going, and then I see your selfish benevolence as just being proud of, you know, the things that your team is doing. Yeah. It, you know, there's, we all learn different things from different people over our careers. And, and there's a lot of things I, I hope people learn from me. One of the things that I love hearing is, is some things repeated back to me that I've, you know, said over and over again. And, and one of those things that I've had so many people working for me come back to me with is what I call the seven most important words of leadership. Now, everybody's got seven. It's not, it's, so this is just my opinion, obviously, but they are, I'm sorry, that's, that's two. Thank you is two. And the three others are, I don't know. It's really important that leaders communicate to their teams that they're not the smartest person in the room. They don't know everything, number one. Number two, that they are truly and sincerely appreciative of the efforts their teams make of whatever success comes of it, because the team's success is the leader's success. And then mistakes happen. You know, yeah. uh, we're not perfect. I am certainly not perfect. I'm the furthest thing from perfect. I've made plenty of mistakes, plenty of errors. I've repeated mistakes in the past. <laughs> so the the ability and willingness to own it and apologize sincerely for it, I think is critically important. And I do believe there's tons more to learn in leadership. But I think if you can nail those seven words as a leader, mm -hmm. you're going to increase the chances that people are willing to follow you by a hundred thousand fold. You just no doubt about it. Wow. Thank you. I'm sorry. I don't know. That's, that's a master series yeah. level class right there. 
Well, thank you. Never write that down. <laughs> right. Free of charge right here. You guys make sure you're making notes on this, this conversation. This is, this is master level. So thank you. I'm sorry. Maybe I'll, I'll I, get, I should get you to, I should get you to ghost write a book for me. That's what, cause that, uh, that's your, your forte for sure. I'll get let's you to let's do it. I hate, I've, I've got one in the works. I may kind of bring in to, to help out. So very nice. Um, that's fantastic. So Kevin, there's the third point that you talked about and we just kind of, kind of, kind of introduced it with books and so forth, but reading, consuming knowledge, that yeah. is your third inspiration point. So unpack that for us a little bit. Sure. You know, I, I'm a believer in, in life, lifelong learning. Um, and that's, again, a kind of a term that's become cliche, but I really believe in it. I think that every single day I wake up looking for what I can learn that day to be better, better husband, better father, better leader, better whatever, better plumber. Sometimes if I've got to go to YouTube and find a video, you know, figure out a plumbing issue, whatever the case may be, I want to be better that day. And so I think there's a bunch of ways to do that. Um, certainly experiences. Uh, help make that happen for sure. But I think something we can control every single day is our intentional, proactive consumption of information. Mm -hmm. So books, podcasts, industry publications, um, videos like this, uh, spending time with other leaders, um, gaining information from them, knowledge from them is really, really important to helping an individual become the kind of person generally our leader specifically that they want to be. And so I take inspiration from that. So I, I make an effort to read a lot. I make an effort to read. Um, I try to read a book a week. I'm successful most weeks, um, <laughs> but not every week. Uh, I try to listen to relevant to me podcasts and information from others that I can glean um, industry publications are clearly important to me. Mm -hmm. um, talking to other people in our industry or other leaders in other industry is important to me and inspirational to me. So I think if you can take advantage of the information that is available to you, it will make you a better person overall. And I think if you look at it the right way, it can inspire you to take the steps that you need to take to actually execute on the knowledge that you're gleaning. And I think that's the final piece of it. Inspiration is great. And I love the feeling I get when I read something that really hits home and a light bulb goes off. But if I take that and bury it, it's not really helpful to me or anybody else. It's about taking that information and executing on it to some level that really makes the impact. So uh, again, very inspirational for me. That's fantastic. And, and I wholeheartedly agree with you reading. I'm, I'm a bit of a book nerd, not as much as you. I don't read a book a week, but I'm, I'm, I give it my all. But I, I, I so agree with you that the consum consumption of knowledge is so powerful, but it's only as good as how you apply it. And you, you spoke about it earlier about, you know, knowledge, learning from those those scenarios and then applying it later. So you're not repeating mistakes or not repeating as often anyway. But it's it truly is of value to these books are only as good as what you pull and apply from it. I agree more. That's why I mean, I, look, I'm and I'm gonna give you a plug here. I've got your book <laughs> here in front of me, and you'll see you'll see you know, marked pages. You'll see highlights. I mean, it's that kind of thing that you to me you have to do to consume it. You can mm -hmm. read it. You can speed read it. You can skim it. And you might get something from it. I'm certainly, yeah. if that's what you need to do, do it. But to me, the real benefit is digging into it. Mm -hmm. So mo a lot of times I will go back a second time or a third time to read it again, because I also find that you can get something else from it that maybe you missed the first time. So consumption of knowledge, not just kind of in passing, but really digging into it, being proactive and intentional about it is important. Kevin. Yeah. I'm so glad you're a book nerd. So thank you so much for that. Hey, we're we're at the end of our time. It's just it's been a joy connecting with you, chatting with you. I could talk to you for hours, but before we wrap this up, I want to give you a chance to share a closing thought with us. Sure. I appreciate that. Um, let me speak to new leaders um, or individuals who are looking to get into leadership or leadership role. Um, a couple of suggestions or recommendations for you. Number one, prioritize the right things. Um, make sure that your your why is is lined up the right way. For me, it's family first, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever it is for you, make sure that's right from the beginning. Number two, be a sponge. We just talked about absorbing knowledge and, 
getting all the information you can, be that sponge, read the books, listen to the podcast, find a mentor, find a coach, whatever the case may be, be a sponge. Thirdly, connect, meet people, reach out to people. LinkedIn is a great mechanism for this. Um, don't just follow, but interact with, send, send that message, make the comment on the post, um, post yourself. Um, and then finally take the risk, take the chance. Um, you've never been a leader. That's okay. We all started somewhere, apply for that job, ask for the opportunity to lead that project, take a chance to do what you haven't done before. And over time, it will pan out for you. So you find the inspiration you need and whatever that is. And I think if you do those five things, I think you have a, a career ahead of you in whatever field you're in, that's going to be nothing but successful. Another master level class right there. Why sponge connect, risk it, go for it. That's right. Kevin, thank you so much for, for sharing with us your inspiration and, and more so uh, beyond that. So thank you so much. Thank you guys for joining us today on the Super Fantastic Exchange. I'm going to put Kevin's link to LinkedIn in the show notes. So make sure you follow him and interact with him as well. Absolutely great content there. And uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Kevin. Guest. Thanks again, Gary. We'll see you on the next episode.